Kind of losing. Hi everyone, it's Zeralt here with the Midweek Zap. Welcome to all the Zapsters. Welcome to new people. Today I am so happy that Ammon Johns is joining us. And Ammon is just a special treat. I don't know how else to say it. Um, so Ammon, welcome and tell us a little bit about yourself. When, when she says I'm a special treat, she means the dog has chewed me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aaron Johns. I'm uh, an internet marketing consultant, which I've been doing for near enough 20 years now. Um, started out in the early days building websites. First question was, you know, we heard there were millions of people online. Where are they? So answering that question started me on the, the course that has become my career of the last 20 years, uh, finding out where the people are, how to get them to move, how to convert them once they have seen your site, all of that kind of stuff all plays together. I'm best known for SEO, but I do a much broader aspect of, of pretty much all marketing online. I, I take a traditional marketing plan and convert that into what's needed today for the digital marketing strategies and, more importantly, the integrated marketing strategies that, that are needed today where you tie all those different projects together. I'm looking at your five S's there, and I think that pretty much covers it, covers it all. Anyway, we, were, we had talked a while back about, you know, where we should go today, and, and we're going to take a broad view, but I just want to alert everyone that with AM and a broad vote view can include a lot of honed in details. <laughs> That's one of the reasons this is just so wonderful. Um, there's so many takeaways when you chat with Emma. Um So we want to talk about business foundation and what that means and um, how to go from that foundation to build and engage and and increase your revenue. Hey, what a concept, Tom. Huh? So let's start with the foundation because I think your foundation is not what most people think. It's starting at the beginning with business. You know, there's there's a good reason for this background today, which is pretty much straight off my site, but you know, it's the at the top there We've got strategy, and that's where it starts. A lot of businesses, they do things this old-fashioned way. You know, you've come up with a product, and then you decide, all right, we can sell this. Let's go out and sell it. And you've already made the most fundamental mistake because you don't start with the product and then try and find a market for it. What you do is you find a market and then build a product that it's already designed for that market, i.e. it's what people are asking for, begging for, wishing for, and that all you've got to do then is let them know it's available because they've been asking for this forever. And that is where so many people go wrong. Is this, you know, they've got a product, they, they, they try to sell what they want to do instead of finding something to do that other people already want to buy. So... So finding something to do that other people already want to buy. Yeah. And uh, for folks who are, who are new and thinking about building a business, what, how do you suggest they go about doing that, Ammon? It starts with really looking hard at why you are thinking of the things that you're thinking of. There's a lot of people, for instance, social media. Oh, I love social media. I could do this for businesses. Okay, the bits you love are the bits nobody wants to buy because everybody loves them. Nobody wants to do the stuff that's good and fun and enjoyable. Now, think of all the bits you hate about social media. <laughs> that's the most commercial parts because that's the part your clients are going to hate as well and that they're willing to pay somebody else to do. Now, yeah, there are businesses who are short on time and the whole of social media seems like a time suck to them. So they are sometimes willing to part with money to get somebody else to do it but a lot of the time those are the businesses that don't value social media otherwise they'd have found the time for it so they're also the ones not willing to pay very much for it so it, it right, really is they're not going to value the service because they don't understand the importance 
Yes. So, you know, taking that on board and understanding, right, what are the big issues that businesses have with social media? One, they don't understand it. Two, they don't really understand how it is providing results. So, what you're selling then is a way of providing results and you show the results and you maybe even price yourself on deliverables. So I will generate leads for you or I will reduce uh, the number of customer service requests you're getting or you know something that is tangible that they can put an actual number to and therefore a value to is, is one of the first things to start with. You see you're taking it from what you want to do to instead what the business wants to achieve, what will sell instead of what you can do. It's really a case of just reversing those standard positions. You know, instead of thinking first of a product and then thinking how also, can I sell this. It's also measurable to you and to the business. Yes. You know, so that your service is measurable and it, and the value of your service is readily perceived, which I think which I think is a very important uh, part of it all when you're actually. You know, you get to that stage where you're going out and you're and you're doing and you're selling. You need that perceived value and and you know, marketing yourself and your service with those measurables included helps businesses perceive why you have value. Absolutely, and the the tricky part, you know, a lot of big business start used to start with market research, and market research was incredibly expensive. It would cost you fifty thousand pounds, eighty thousand dollars, to get a, a a decent study done. Social media lets you do all of that for free. You are able to tune in on people's conversations, people talking about what they want to buy, what the problems they're having are, what they can't seem to find a solution to, all of the time. So if you're a programmer, you can do some searches around your programming languages or around certain applications that you know run in it. Look for the problems people are having. Look for the things they can't seem to find a solution to. And that gives you an idea. Actually, yeah, I could do that. Then work out how much and whether the problem is worth that to them because that's another issue. Sometimes, yes, a lot of people complain about this thing, but they don't fix it because the fix costs more than the pain is worth. There's a lot of things we put up with, you know, there's a lot of life that isn't that pleasant and it's part of getting by. We, we moan about a lot of things that we wouldn't fix even if we could really. And Knowing that difference is another part of understanding whether you've really got a market or not. Any other suggestions about, you know, do I really have a market or not for my new wonderful thing that I love to do? If it's something that's online, never underestimate the power of an internet cafe or a coffee bar where you know you've got internet users for the price of buying somebody a cup of coffee you'll be surprised how much they're willing to have a conversation with you about the things they do what they use and you can get real first person perspectives they'll even let you watch them do a search you know if you were trying to sell your home how would you start really broad like that and it lets you see Okay, right, where do I start? I'll start with the search. Where am I going to go from there? Watching them can teach you an awful lot of stuff. And that's not just for starting up a new business, but even for marketing your existing business. Understanding how other people use the internet is so, so important. I think that's, I think that's a, just a great idea and, and, and a basis of being able to realize if you're if the service that you provide is something they really need or not because if they don't need your service it's nothing's going to happen except a very pleasant conversation but yeah you know, absolutely um, David in, in the comments just asked uh, about my thoughts about performance results I think it can be an incredibly effective strategy when the biggest problem for marketing is that other people see risk instead of opportunity. So when people, yeah, that's the comment there. So when people see uh, a lot of risk instead of seeing the opportunity, this lets you take some of that risk for them and say, well, look, if I don't deliver, it's not going to cost you. 
if I do deliver, okay, I'm going to charge you an arm and a leg, but you know, you're know, you not paying anything without it being worthwhile. It's always tied to a return on investment. So that's a way of offsetting that. Now, it, it can be expensive. It's certainly adding to your overheads because now you're having to spend extra time tracking, reporting. You know, Those all play into it, so it does end up more expensive uh, for the person buying it, but it's a way of offsetting that risk that lets them just say, oh, no, it's too risky. I'm not doing it. I kind of like uh, that kind of, of setup sometimes. Um, it really does depend on how much you can figure that reporting in and how much you can really tie this to value, but you'll be amazed at how much this can be done. Years ago when uh, I was doing this, I used to have a five times ROI guarantee. Uh, the, the money that you spend on my charges, you will make back five times over in six months. That was an absolute guarantee. And I, I did it because I based it on the fact that I actually averaged 10 times ROI and therefore it was easy to guarantee half of that and you know if I don't meet that I work for free until I do you know until you've got five times your money back I don't stop um, but it was really easy to do because what we were doing was looking at what they were spending on traditional marketing right if I phase this out and you'd get no less customers than you were getting, but you were spending 15000 a month on print and radio advertising, then, you know, it, it's a no-brainer to them. But if they're getting the same results for less money, they're going to do that. And the amount less is how much your ROI is. So tying in all of these things, you know, less time on customer support, less time on sales, if you can shorten the sales process, if, you, if the salesman used to spend you know, uh, three phone calls each at uh, 30 minutes and you can get that down to two because now one of those leads is, is those leads are pre-qualified by a website, then that again is a tangible business benefit that every single day, every single customer you're saving 30 minutes on, you're saving 50% almost of the time you're actually knocking a third off, but you know the time you've taken is only 50% of what they're now spending. That's a tangible benefit, and it can be tied to ROI because they know what their staff costs and they know what their staff bring in. And so, so. then on, on, the, uh, on the other side of that, that next S down, we have site. Yeah. And... And I've, I've, I'm kind of cheating because I've heard you talk before about the site, but um, let's talk about how that fits into the foundation of your business. Because I think it's a, everything that I've ever heard you say about the business site, I think, is just so spot on. Well, these days, let, let's start with the, the case for this. If I hear about a business, if two friends are talking at the water cooler and they mention a business. If I've heard about it from somewhere else, I've see, heard it on the radio, I saw a TV ad but I didn't catch the, the full details, didn't catch that number. The first thing I do is Google that company or look for that company or look for that company.com. That's the very first thing I'm going to do. So your website these days is your hub. Forget the yellow pages. Your website is the hub. It's the place people will naturally go to look for information, know more about what you do. What was that thing you said that sounded interesting? Great, I'm going to go to your website to find out. How do I get in touch with you? Where are your, your, how do I make my next order? All of these questions we go to the website to sort out. Your website is your presence online. And more importantly, Today, it's your presence. You know, there, there's very little difference. The, the integration of online and offline for all of us has become much more complete. There are very few people who don't use the internet now. Um, and it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. That number of people is going to get down to 5%, 3%, 2%. You know, at, at which point, where does your market stop? So you have to have a website. Now, what that website is, it starts off as being your headquarters. This is head office. This is how to contact you. That's the, the core essence of a website. It doesn't matter whether you're selling stuff through it. You know, if you used to want to send out mail order catalogs, that's fine. The website is giving them a place to contact you, to send their application form, whatever. 
it's better if you can do it online, of course, but even if you're not, even if you've got a traditional offline business, you, you've got a taxi company and most of your stuff is, you know, answering the telephone, have the website. It's still going to be where people go when they're looking for you. And more and more, as the smartphone comes in, I mean, 80% of teenagers in secondary school education now, so we're talking 12, 13, 14 year olds, 80% of them have smartphones. 80% of them use the internet on their phone. So you need a website that, that's going to be easy to look up because that is where people are going to go even when they're out in the street. They're, you know, I'm out in town, I've had a good meal, I want to get a cab home. I can look up local cabs online far easier than I can ring somebody to get a number. And I'd, I'd like to tie that into to search because there's now sort of like a dual place for people to be as far as search is concerned with their business and that is the business page on Google Plus. What are your thoughts about that? The business page on Google Plus is certainly useful. It's good to tie the two things together. If your business is local then you really do need to you know be looking at the Google My Business stuff. You want to have your listing there and make sure that your uh, name, address, phone number, NAP details are the same uh, through that and your website and any other places that you mentioned. Tie together your Twitter account, your Facebook account if you're doing any of those kind of things. You know, it's, it's getting all of those ducks in a row, making sure everything matches so Google understands you as an entity instead of lots of fragmented things that all have the same name. So that's one of the places that structured data actually becomes important, which is things like schema. Now, you don't have to know about schema, everybody out there, but your web developer does. Whoever is building your website, make sure they do understand what schema is. Not that they're a, 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 a fanatic about schema. It's not so important that you mark up everything. It just makes it much more simple for Google to understand your business as an entity, i.e. a brand, when all of those things are aligned. Okay. And um, I think everybody needs to be aware. I think most of the audience here, but I just want to say it out loud, <laughs> is, is that the schema now and the markup is, you know, more important than, say, links or even keywords. I don't know that I'd go that far. Um, it right. depends what you're doing. I do believe that the most important thing since the Hummingbird update was brand. Brand is so, so important. Um, it, it's what differentiates. We know that Google's rewarded brands for a while, but people often think of brand and think big brand. That's not what brand means. Brand is originally, you know, it was a branding iron, it was your mark on your cattle so people could recognize that it was yours. And if your cattle were better fed and had better pasture, then that brand mark told you the meat was better. And that translated into business and business branding was born and yes, it started off with you know the, the font we use and the colors we use and the way our stores look, the layout of the stores, that was a part of our brand. But brand is more than that. Brand is how people perceive you. The essence of brand is what you think of me or what that person thinks of me and what that person thinks of me. They've each got different perceptions but their overall gestalt feeling is your brand. You always have a brand, you just may not be in control of it. <laughs> so understanding that brand happens and if you aren't actively looking at what that brand perception is and how you are steering that, then it's running away from you and other people are defining what your brand is by what, how they've been treated, what their experience is and what other people think about it. And then I, want, I want to bring up I got a couple sure. of, of, um, of comments. Uh, this is from David Leopold, actually right at the beginning, Business Foundation, great place to start. <laughs> and, um, and Kristen Drysdale says, I need your service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, and then um, 
Candy in Japan says Google will be launching the Google Webmaster test, which connects to search and will help a lot of people. Also, it will be available in all languages this April. So watch out for that. Oh, I didn't know that about the languages. That's great. Thank you very much, Candy. Yep. And, and then, um, Ammon, we'll just take one other comment, and, and it's a question from Tim Sweeney. And he says, it's always refreshing to hear from Ammon Johns. I would love to know your thoughts on the April 21st Google mobile-friendly search update. Okay. This one is, of course, something a lot of people have been freaking out about. Google have said that basically if your site isn't mobile friendly, it's not going to show up in mobile search. You know, it's going to be downgraded. This should be a no-brainer. I mean, this should have been going on all the time. It doesn't work in mobile. Why should it be ranked in mobile search in the first place? Because this isn't Google's ordinary search results. This is the mobile search results. If your site doesn't work for mobiles, why on earth should it even be listed in mobile search? So it's not a huge deal in itself, and it shouldn't be, and it shouldn't freak people out. There is, however, this thing. If your site isn't mobile friendly and isn't showing up in mobile search, and 80% of those kids have smartphones and a lot more people are using the internet for that first point of contact, I've just heard about your company, does it have a website? Yeah, that's it. Right. Now I'm going to remember this for later and look at it. But I've looked first on mobile. This happens more and more. If your site can't be found on mobile, they may not come back later on the desktop. If they can't tweet about it or use Instagram or, you know, all of those social apps that they're going to have on their smartphone about your business, you know, I've just, just got this wonderful thing through. I'm going to tell my friends about it. You know, this is happening on mobile. If your site isn't mobile friendly, they're not going to be sharing it as much, and that could then trigger through to the main search results, i.e. there are less social signals about this site than there would have been if it was mobile friendly. So mobile friendly is important. A lot of people immediately head towards responsive sites. This is where I am a little bit different to most. Responsive is great as a minimum standard, but your mobile users are different. Um, if I've got a complex product, then I probably want to have PDFs and white papers and comparisons and all kinds of things on my website that let people have the data they need to make a, a decision about a technical product. That's not going to work on mobile. All that people probably want to know on mobile is my phone number and my location, because either there are salesmen coming to visit and they want to check where, you know, they're in the car and want to get to the right place. I've got a business meeting with you and I want to find your office fast. Or how can I get through to a salesman to ask the technical questions I want to ask? So those, those things are primary for a mobile user. They're not going to want to read through PDFs. They're not going to want to look at big tables of data. So for those kind of situations, responsive may not be enough because all responsive is doing is serving the same site to everyone and using CSS to change how it's displayed on the size of screen. But all of the data is there. Now bear in mind, most of us pay a lot more for our phone data than we do for our home. You know, data transfer rates on mobiles can be quite expensive still. Hopefully that will go down over time, but for a lot of people that's expensive unless you're at home and if you're at home you're probably on your tablet anyway, not your smartphone. So understanding that your site needs to be really lean for those users. The smaller the code, the better is so important and I still am a fan of a dedicated mobile site if you're expecting much mobile traffic because they are after different things and it lets you just give them the information they want without huge amounts of code on a very expensive data plan. I, back to echoing you know, what I've heard from you from, from the start about being there. I think there's one other ingredient that people should check before they panic about, you know, mobile friendly and all that business and that is to check how much of your business actually comes from mobile. 
I think for restaurants and um, brick and mortar probably are going to have a lot that comes from mobile. I know that recently there were a group of us that checked and you know I had 13 percent came from mobile and you know, someone else had 11 percent came from mobile so you need to keep that in mind too you know what what how important is it overall to your business I mean yep. you have to be aware you just have to but be aware. But you also have to be careful that you're not doing uh, well, basically, the bias isn't showing into your results. I.e., if I'm on, if I'm not very good on mobile now, guess how much of my mobile, uh, you know, how much of my business is going to be mobile? Well, I suck at it right now, so almost nothing. So I'm going to go. Oh, well, it isn't important anyway. How much could mobile be a part of your business? Is the really important question. If you're a restaurant, mobile should be 60% plus. If you're a local based service, mobile should be 60% or more of your business. And if it isn't, then you're probably not targeting it very well. Now, often it's just that people want that phone number or they want to know where your office is, but that kind of thing is so, so important to get right. But do understand if you're not good at it right now, it's going to show us a lot less of your business than it should be. So, uh, I, I think the bottom line to it is that if your site is not e mobile friendly, either responsive or a, a, a mobile site, that you're losing business. Often, yes. Yes. Yeah, and absolutely. so uh, we have um, quite a few comments now, so I want to bring some of them in. Um, Roland Takaoka says, social media biz page without a website is simply a lost opportunity and a poor business decision. Some go to just as a result of social media listing, but some don't. A website is considered a measure of a business's relevance, professionality, and verifiable legitimacy. There's certainly some truth to that, but there's a lot of small businesses. Um... I've got a mum and pop news agent tobacconist sweet shop. You know, a little corner candy store and news agent. We have, we have those pretty much all over the world. Do I need a website? Probably not. Social media presence is probably enough for people to be able to, you know, that, that's got my phone number on it, that's got where I am. It's probably enough. I probably don't need to invest in a website because I'm not going to be selling, you know, I, I can't get the kind of bulk rates to be selling confectionery online. Um, so for those kind of people, probably a social media presence is enough. I wouldn't say that they shouldn't have a website, but it's probably not an expense that would necessarily be worthwhile. This is the, the kind of site that ultimately would maybe build its own website, but it's not going to be a huge business incentive. Social media presence for those is enough. However, for everybody else, if you're not doing just local business, and if you're not primarily you know, a, a walk-in footfall business, website is pretty much essential. And it, the website is, if you've got a, a serious internet strategy, if internet is part of your business, there needs to be a hub to that which should be your website. Okay, and then we wait. Says on mobile phones, contact details, social media share buttons, how to reach your physical office is very important, I think. Am and Johns, do you agree with we wait? Absolutely. This is exactly what I'm saying. A lot of the time when people use your, your site mobile, it's somebody that's got a business meeting with you that wants to you know, double check. They're on the road. They're, they're, they're headed there now. I want to double check where you are you know, so I don't take the wrong turning and, and waste 20 minutes and be late for the meeting. Uh, I want to have a phone number for customer services, for complaints, for the buyer, you know, whoever I need to contact within your business. So all of that kind of stuff. Definitely, you want to, you know, make sure that's there for mobile. That's going to be the primary results. People don't do grocery shopping right now on their mobile. And if they were going to, because of the small uh, screen real estate, you would need an app to do that effectively, not a website. 
website for desktop, for tablet, fine, but for a mobile, it just starts to get too small a screen um, for them to be filling in forms and doing stuff like that. This is why people, you know, end up switching and typing on a mobile when you have to start filling in shipping details. Oh, forget it. <laughs> no, it, it, that is very unlikely to happen. We have a couple of people agreeing with you. Um, Alex. Rika Gonzalez says, thanks, Em and Johns. That's what I'm trying to say. There are certain businesses I'll go to just because they have great reviews and a local page. Yeah. And some of those businesses, it's so important. You know, it can be that, that bagel bar or the donut shop or the coffee bar. They don't necessarily need a website. Some of them can still do well with that. If they want to create a brand, then the website can go with it. But some of them... That's not their core business. They're not going to be doing business online, and just having the the local presence through social, uh, including of course the Google business page, is more than enough for them. Well, we have two from Peter Hatherly, and he says our tagline is branded web marketing and design that works. Love it. And then also from Peter. Um, he says, agree, a social media page is only an extra part of your business where the website is the heart of your marketing. Google Maps are good for local businesses and a reason for a website. Yeah. And this is, this is another thing that confuses people. There are actually three kinds of local when it comes to search that matters. Um, the first kind is classic local search which is when Google is determining, you know, by location that this business is close to your business. You know, you're within the, the service radius and it's giving you local results even when you haven't asked for it. Then there's the explicit local where I've typed in a location. Now, this isn't always my locality. If I am thinking of having a holiday in Berlin and I search for hotels in Berlin, I'm doing a local search for Berlin. I want local results to Berlin. I want to know hotels there. I don't want the Berlin Hotel in New York. Um, so that's a second kind of local search, and it's slightly different. And then there's the third one, which is the maps, which is not just the search, but also when I'm looking on Google Maps, some businesses show up. You know, you can see the train station, and you can see the coffee shops on your map without looking for them. Now, not all businesses are eligible for those map pins. Uh, they cut web design companies out of those and SEO companies because they were spamming them. Um, so if you've got a web design business, social media business, you're probably not going to be able to get that. But if you've got a restaurant, if you've got a coffee shop, if you've got a taxi company, any of those kind of things, then having those map pins so that people can just see that you're nearby while they're looking at the map is so, so important. I think we, we have a comment from Christian Drysdale, and I think it's um, a very good thing to think about. She says, it's better to have no website than to have one that is not going to be maintained. There's nothing worse telling about a business than landing on broken links. Absolutely. Um, but the, the, <laughs> the, the, how can you not love Christian? Eh? I don't know. It's, it's so, so important when people put up a website or a blog and it so quickly gets out of date and that's annoying you know if, if you're not going to be able to maintain a thing don't start something that needs maintenance create something that is going to look fine without and I think there's a lot of businesses that immediately start with a blog where well, you didn't need a blog you needed a static site then if months down the line you find you have this constant stream of ideas not just for a week or two but over the course of those months and you'd like to be able to stream those instead of on social media these should be going onto your own site great that's when you add a blog but the, the default should be a static website I think I say that one more time because I think a lot of people think that the blog is you know there's a, there's a lot of the information out there especially in the last several years about you know making money with your blog and your blog is so important and you know blogging every day you need to do it or you're going to die because all of that information is out there and so say it again <laughs> most 
small businesses probably shouldn't be blogging. Um, what you should do is have a static website and use social media. And if you find that you have lots of interesting things to say, you're making you know posts almost every day that are too long, then think about moving those to your website and your blog rather than putting them on somebody else's property. But do that first. Don't immediately think, I've got a website, I've got to have a blog. You haven't. There is this tendency for people to immediately go, I want a website. Oh, WordPress is easy. Yes, it is, but it's a blogging platform. It's a content management system. It creates very, very bloated code. If you don't need it, don't use it. If you're not going to be needing to update this without learning HTML, you need to be able to put up three or four new pages every single week, then of course WordPress is a great way to not have to know the HTML and not pay for a web developer to create the pages for you. But there are other means of doing that and just creating a, a plain blank HTML template is often enough. WordPress creates very heavy code. It's not great. It's great for what it's supposed to do, which is removing the need for webmasters in order to be able to get content up fast. If I've got a client who wants to be able to talk and put their news out and stuff like that every single week, and I'm a web developer, it's much easier to give them a WordPress blog and instead of you know trying to charge them for every single extra page. It's a lot easier. But it's easier for me, and it's easier for them to do. It doesn't necessarily... Remember as we came in with foundation, if it's easy, it not, isn't necessarily the best thing commercially. Well, here, it's not easier for your customer. Your customer is downloading all of this extra code. If they're on mobile, they are paying to download all of this extra code. Your ease is costing them money. How long do you think they're going to like you for that? It's... It's, it's just so true and also just a cautionary tale for people who do have who do have a WordPress there there's a lot there it's not like set and forget and there's no maintenance I would say I have updates several times a week yeah and you need to do them you need to do them you know for security reasons and for functionality and all of those things and so you know to go to go in thinking that that WordPress is going to be your simple solution because you don't know code um, first of all you're going to end up learning some code because you're just going to want to tweak little thingies uh, but the other is that it, it you do need to pay attention for for the those both of those reasons for security and for for the functionality of of your site as it is so I just I just want to let people know that wordpress.org you know when you set up your self-managed uh, WordPress page doesn't mean no work it means no coding mm -hmm. that makes any sense <laughs> oh, and the same with blog or any of the other you know automatic blogging platforms you pay for the ease in different ways and usually it is because the code is a little bit unwieldy it's not going to rank as well as a very quick thing for, for people who don't really understand what this means have a look at amonjohns.com you know if you've got a website yourself have a look at amonjohns.com open it up in your browser right click on the page and do view source now do this on your own site and have a look at the differences in the code and think that you know on a mobile you're having to download every single character and you're paying a certain amount you know a thousand characters is, is 1k of data so understand this and understand that if somebody's visiting many pages on your site your WordPress site may be costing more than it needs to for them to do that and while, though that's easy for you at the end of the day, if you can make it a lot easier for your customers, this is another thing that you can point out. Look, this is how much we care about our customers. We minimize the amount it costs you to do this. So simplicity is core. It really is. And your page will rank better. As long as I can remember, a leaner page always outranks 
a, a heavy coded page if everything else is equal. You know what, Ammon? I don't believe this, but we are coming to the end of the time. We're actually <laughs> over by a minute or so. So if you have some last words to share with everyone, and then we're going to bring it to a close. Last words? I didn't even know I was ill. Um, <laughs> 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 well, I say, these five S's, they, they all tie together. It starts with the strategy. It goes through your site then you're worried about the search because this is how people get information these days. The world's too big for us to remember everything. Not everyone has a, an eidetic memory. So understanding how search plays in and how people use search at different stages. You know, I, when I first think about getting an insurance policy, my first step isn't to go looking for a place to buy insurance policies, it's to understand the differences between insurance policies. And my search is likely to be insurance policies or insurance policies in my state, but I'm not ready to buy one. I haven't got a, you know, I'm not ready today to buy into any policy. What I'm trying to do is learn about policies. Understanding how this all plays in is so important to your strategy. It feeds back. Um, definitely understanding that social is one of the last things. When all the rest is in place, then you can, you know, be out there confident, knowing who you are, not only who you are as a person, but who you are as a business and who you are to them. Understanding your brand, your position in their mind, in their lives, how you fit in with them, that's what makes social success possible. And finally, success, this is about tracking. And this is one of the areas where, above all other places, consultants help. You know, that's their job. They know this stuff. They are there to give you the best possible advice for your specific circumstances. But if you're not going to get one anywhere else, get one for your analytics. Get somebody to set up your analytics for you so that you can really get useful data, not default data. The, the data you get from something like Google Analytics by default is worse than useless. It's misleading it will actually make you make some wrong decisions because some of the things it says don't mean what you think they mean and unless you've set it up to measure the kind of success that you need to measure like okay this says that people are bouncing yeah they're bouncing after 30 minutes on your page that kind of bounce Christ give me as many of them as I can get <laughs> understanding that, that you need to add in to get your analytics to work well for you is so important on success that's my lot all right. So thank you. Thank you so much. I wish we I think we could go on for three more hours, but everybody would be tired and nobody would be here. But you know, <laughs> it's the basis, the foundation. I want to thank you so very, very much. Wise words as always, Ammon Johns. Thank you. And thank you, Zapsters, for your questions and comments. Um, and if there's any any comments and questions that are, that you know we we can't get time for now if you want us to come back do another show on a specific thing let us know in the comments and you know awesome. i'm i'm happy to be here with Zara anytime oh, all right well boy i'm going to love being with Ammon and john so anyway thank you everyone and we'll see you next week